Hi, I'm Sydney, and I'm so glad you came to see me today. Guess what we're going to talk about? My favorite topic? Jesus. I met Jesus on my deathbed. It's been close to 30 years ago. My boy just had his 30th birthday. And what happened years ago, I was very, very sick. And my boy, um, he, uh, I could barely make it through the day that I did and took care of my baby each day. And then when my baby was one and a half years old, I knew why I was dying. Um, I, I felt a lump in my breast and it was a big hard lump and it felt like a rock. And the moment I felt that, I thought, I'm dying of terminal cancer. And I knew I was. And I had no hope at that time. I want you to know that I was an atheist and uh, basically anti-Christ, uh, you know, living in darkness, deceived by the spirit of this world. So basically, I didn't believe in an afterlife. I didn't believe in a God. I didn't believe in heaven or hell. I was one of these naturalists, you know, this is how we're we're programmed in our school systems. We're programmed to think we live, we die, that's it, and the physical realm is all there is. So basically, I knew I was dying and I had no hope. But a miracle happened. So I went to the doctors and they did, uh, they took out the lymph, they took out my lymph nodes, they injected poison chemotherapy right into my veins. For a year, I took radiation. And during that time period, uh, I got weaker and weaker and sicker and sicker. And I was just laying on my bed, dying, basically. And uh, I was really scared of death. I've been afraid of death. You know, maybe you are too. Maybe you're not. But I've been afraid of death because uh, for about a, a whole decade, a whole decade, I could kind of feel it creeping up on me. And I was really afraid. So during that time period when I was on chemo and the cancer was still consuming my body, I would think, okay, now think about this, Sydney. Am I willing to bet my eternal soul that there's no God? I thought, well, why would I do that? And I thought, can I prove the non-existence of God? And I thought, Sydney, you've got to be crazy. You cannot prove the non-existence of God. And I thought, have I been to every place in the universe? No. Have I been to every possible dimension in the universe? No. So why have I been so blinded or foolish to say there there is no God and to to just accept that and I decided enough of that I'm not going to be you know brainwashed by some education and world system that says there's no God mm -mm. so I said to Jesus you know I knew that he did hang on that cross and and that he did die and he did resurrect, at least that's what we were told, and he was born, you know, at Christmas, baby Jesus, and rose from the dead on Easter Sunday. So I said, okay, Jesus, if you are real, what I ask of you, I ask that you get me to heaven, you know, if there is a heaven, and um, get give my family and my husband and my kids a long, good life, and then get them there to heaven someday too. And some kind of powerful, invisible force hit me then. And this fear, oh my God, this horrible fear of death, it vanished like that. And all of a sudden, I wasn't afraid to die. So I think that must have been what we call born again. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, right there on my deathbed with the Savior 
and the soul just talking. And I got born again. Fear left me. And there's uh, two verses that come to mind. There's this one verse in the book of Hebrews, and it says something to this effect. It said that Jesus, you know, as God, became a human being, you know, like me and you, so that he could free us, me and you, from our fear of death, and that he became a human being. He died as a human being, for human beings, as the Son of God, and he resurrected and he defeated the devil. The devil used to have the power of death, but he doesn't anymore. No, nope. Jesus, he has the keys of hell, death, and the grave. So Jesus became the human, went to death, conquered death, rose again, defeated Satan, so that you and I don't ever have to go to death. We don't ever have to be afraid to die. So that verse is in the book of Hebrews. And I'd like to finish off by reading you a verse of God's mercy. Okay, this is Luke 1, And these are different translations here. And when I read this verse, it was like, what happened to me? Okay, it says, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven. And that was Jesus. Here's another translation. Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us. And that's what happened to me. Oh, and by the way, Jesus will come again. Because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunshine, the sunrise, shall visit us from on high. The dawn will visit us from on high. Here's an interesting translation. Through the affections of compassion of our God, in which the sunrise will visit us from on high. So all of us who lived in darkness, me, I've seen a great light, and that light is Jesus. And in a sense, I'm a sign for you that this isn't a coincidence between you and I today, that God uh, wanted this divine appointment so that we could be together, so that you could know that Jesus is real, and is full of mercy and compassion and forgiveness and grace. And I discovered that the hard way. And I'm a sign to you that he is real. You can trust Jesus. You can love him because he loves you deeply. So maybe you are in a bad situation where you need mercy. You know, many, that's kind of the human condition. Or maybe you are, are dying or or maybe you, um, uh, you know, don't believe in Jesus. Well, he's present with us. We're two or more gathered together in his name. He's right here. And I want to pray for you. So, so just close your eyes, okay, and think of Jesus. So he's right here. So Jesus, right now, I pray for the viewer. I pray that you heal broken hearts, that you heal broken bodies, that you raise, raise broken lives, that you give mercy, that you give eternal life, and you give power from on high for people to believe in the name of Jesus. And Lord Jesus, we remit and forgive sins. Their sins are forgiven by the blood of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, Jesus loves you. There's been power in this prayer, so expect good things from God. See you next time.